Hey folks, I'm John P. And I'm Callie Lewis. Aereo, the Supreme Court, and the risk of innovation. Welcome to Geek Beat. You stole my welcome to I, Geek Beat. I did. You were ready to pounce on that. I was. I was supposed to be like a back and forth. I'm so sorry, John. It doesn't matter. I know why. I know why that happened. It's because <laughs> you're too excited. I because am. we have Gary Shapiro with us today. Yay! <laughs> hey, Gary, how are you today? I'm doing terrific. Good morning. Good morning. We have to play a game whenever you come on. Where in the world is Gary Shapiro today? Okay. So am I supposed to guess? No. I, I have no idea. Where I know where he is. Oh, where is he? Are you at, are you at HQ? No. No, I'm actually not in Washington, D.C. area. I am in the Detroit area in my home, in my home office. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he's awesome. joining us from home. Uh, his kids are downstairs, I think. One of them is. The other's at school. Well, uh -huh. that, that's good. <laughs> All right. Probably so, where they should be. Yeah, exactly. Gary is, of course, as you guys know, the CEO of the CEA, the Consumer Electronics Association. Who puts on CES. There's a lot of C's in there. Yeah, there are. <laughs> it's the trifecta of C's. And we love talking to him about important issues that are going on in the world of consumer electronics. And right now, there are a few issues more important than the Supreme Court case, which is going to decide all of our futures. Like, I don't know, it's the most important case of all time, do you think, Gary? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I've actually changed some of our own press stuff and tried to say this is not the most important case of all oh, time. Oh, okay, that, okay. That would have been a Sony Betamax case, which really <laughs> made it clear that you have a right to record and what fair use is and pave the way for the iPod and all the PVR and even major use of the Internet. So that would have been, but that did come up in this discussion at the Supreme Court this week. Well, let's you know, talk, before we before let's, you give us yeah. your, before you give us the education. Let me tell you what I think I know. Well, let's okay. say, I mean, first of all, yeah. we need to we need to explain what area. That's is. what I was going to try oh, and okay. do. Okay, so it, assuming that I understand, you would think that because I reported on this, that I might have actually done some fact checking or research. Well, well, you never do that, Gary. We don't let facts get in the way around here. Okay, but <laughs> what I think is going on is this, Aereo has a data center. They put a bunch of antennas in their data center. They put a bunch of DVRs in their data center. And a person like me could pay them a fee for the service of gaining access to one DVR and one antenna, which I can then tell it, hey, record whatever shows I like, and then whenever I want to, I can log in and watch my DVR content that was captured by my antenna whenever and wherever I want. Do I understand it correctly, more or less? More or less, except I want to make it clear that the only programming that they record is the local television signal off the air. And that's right. what pretty much, that's their legal argument because it's an over-the-air television signal. You have the right to record it from the Sony Betamax case. And also there's another major case called the Cablevision case, and there's a law that says that uh, what it is. So that was how they built the system. But the broadcasters are really upset at Aereo because they say that Aereo is illegally stealing this content, but which is not the case because it's by law open. Well, before we, before we dis debate whether or not legally this is, is fair, um, can we understand why do the broadcasters care? I mean, people are watching. I mean, it means if I'm not able to watch yeah. content uh, because it gets broadcast when I can't watch it, and now I can watch it, why do they care, Gary? Well, this is the phenomenal irony here, is that for the last 60 years, they've sold themselves in all the spectrum they use that they're borrowing from us, the public, because they provide a free over-the-air signal to everyone in a geographic area. But two things have changed, three things have changed. One is a lot of cities have these very, very tall buildings and you can't get that free over the air signal with antenna. A second thing that's changed is that people have shifted from watching their television sets to watching a device 
uh, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet or even a laptop or a computer. Mm -hmm. So most of the viewing has shifted to a different device and the broadcasters are not really part of that anymore. The third thing that's changed is that in the last few years, the broadcasters have started charging cable companies to carry their signal. And in a matter of a very short few years, they've made a few billion dollars as an industry and it's growing rapidly. So they've gotten away from this free over the air service, which is what the spectrum is really used for, and fewer than 10% of American families even rely on exclusively now, to a cable company you pay us and you can carry it. So the broadcasters are, are I understand their concern that this tremendous flow of spigot of money is gonna be turned off because the entire marketplace has changed and people are getting their content differently. So they're very concerned, but what, by making this argument, what they've done is thrown out any pretense that they are providing a public service with their free over-the-air broadcasting because 20 years ago, they, would have, they should have created Aereo. They should have created, a, in a sense, yeah, what it looks have. like a cable service. Aereo actually expands the viewing of their advertising. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Circumstances. I, I mean, if Aereo is just another delivery mechanism for them for them to get their content to additional eyeballs, but they're not making any money off of it. Well, well, no, they, they are. They, 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 they are making money off I of mean, it. So, <laughs> look, we we distribute. That's like saying, okay, Geekbeat started out on iTunes, right? And later, it became available on YouTube, yeah. and on Roku, and on TiVo, and all this. And you didn't see us going, wait a minute now, we don't want you distributing our right. show on those other platforms. Oh, and by the way, we distribute to Taco Bell, and Wendy's, yeah, and we gas didn't do stations. That. We're like, but yeah, please, bring it on. <laughs> give us more viewing audience. So why, I mean, is the thing that, that, that they're worried about that that it's just a DVR component? Are they still fighting the DVR? Like, yeah. okay, the more people may watch, but they're gonna skip all the commercials and then that'll piss off our advertisers and we won't make money? I mean, what, what do they care about? It, you know, the issue of is commercial skipping has never come up. They acknowledge that people will watch their, their programs with commercials and that's not the issue. They made this a very legal issue. They painted Aereo as doing something devious or illegal or even a couple of Supreme Court justices were saying, they just created this to get around technicalities in the law. Well, that's what the law says they can do, so they did it. And they're not, you know, so the question is, are they hurting broadcasters? And the real question is, what is the future of broadcasting? Yeah. yeah. And there's so many different things that are coming into play very quickly, and even at the Supreme Court argument that came out. So if Aereo wins, then the broadcasters may go to Congress and try to get it reversed, and I, um, we'll see what happens. If if Ariel loses, then Ariel's gone, and that's too bad, and it depends how the Supreme Court decision writes it, because what was interesting was there's a lot of concern, even among the justices, that even if they gave the broadcasters what they want, how they could write an opinion which wouldn't hurt cloud computing, everything going to the cloud, or various aspects of cloud computing, you know, all the different things you could do, whether it's your content, other content, curated content, and other innovations that could come along that we can't even predict today. And the right. court, I was reassured that the court really was focused on not hurting innovation. And also, but that what they didn't focus on was the real reasons all this stuff is going on. They never talked about, in a sense, the money flow. They didn't talk about how things have changed over time. It's, it's almost only in, on shows like this can we talk about that stuff. And the other thing that's happening, quite honestly, that's at the same time, which is really interesting, is you know we have these great devices, but we've run out of spectrum to use them. We're going to full motion video like this, and there's not enough spectrum to get a great signal out there. So we need more spectrum. The federal government, from President Obama to the entire Congress, Democrats and Republicans have recognized that. They've created this thing to incentivize broadcasters to auction off spectrum with money share, the revenue sharing with the government. And it's starting to appear that the broadcasters uh, are not going along with this. They kind of agree, we're not going to auction off our spectrum. We'll get a lot more money if we wait later. The rules will be better. In fact, not one network affiliate has been identified as willing to go along with the spectrum auction yet. And you're hearing it here first, by the way. This has all not been reported publicly. Okay. These, these are things which... I, you just talk to a lot of people, you pick up on, but there's a lot of concern that the spectrum auction is something that the broadcasters consciously 
are trying to avoid because they feel, even though it's only an eight-year license, which must be renewed, they're trying to avoid it. So we're going to run out of spectrum. Our devices won't work. And broadcasters are sitting on this stuff, which, as I said before, fewer than 10% of American homes even rely on. Yeah. And it's a pretty unfortunate situation. And there, there is a, a bit of a conflict that can be developing in the future between people who want their devices to work and content creators like your who frankly rely upon people getting a signal with two devices over the yeah. internet uh, and the broadcasters are going to be trying to maximize their own revenue, mm. keep their spectrum and squat on it. I'm scared now because, you know, I hadn't even thought about what you mentioned with, with regards, cloud, yeah, yeah with, the, with the implications of a ruling. I mean, no, it, I, I think, I don't know about you, I, I, I've got, I'm wondering, Gary, You've got to have an opinion. Do you, who do you think is going to win this case? Well, I don't Your know. gut. I Just mean, your first gut. First of all, I've been wrong at every time I've predicted the Supreme <laughs> Court. You know, the thing about the Supreme Court is we always say, what does the law say? What does the law say? Well, the reality in America is for 200 years, the law is what the Supreme Court says it is. Right. That's how our system is designed. So even though there's arguments both ways, it's the Supreme Court. By my count... There is one justice, Justice Ginsburg, who is clearly against us. She has never, ever done anything but favor copyright owners in her writings and her decisions. And what she said from the bench made it absolutely clear. There are eight other justices who appear to be genuinely learning, puzzling over the issue, and trying to do what's right. They're and, asking a lot of questions, right? Right. A lot of questions. And as a, the uh, Supreme Court reporter for the National Journal told me, she said, you know, the press walked in there and I thought it was 9-0 in front of broadcasters because for all this time, all they heard is from broadcasters. You know, you, it's really unbelievable how much money is behind this thing. So, yeah. like, I showed up at 8 in the morning. I'm, I'm a Supreme Court lawyer, and I figured I'd get in easily at the Supreme Court lawyer line. There was 80 Supreme Court lawyers ahead of me, some of them paying $30 an hour for line sitters. And I never got into the actual physical argument. I was wow. in the wait the ante room and I could only hear the audio. Wow. Which was amazing. But because and there were hundreds of people that were turned away. So those are all the lawyer lobbyists in Washington, DC for ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, even PBS. I was standing there with a lawyer from Gannett. I mean, there's there's so much at stake here. Um, you know, some of the biggest people from the entertainment industry came down to hear this case because it's billions of dollars that's at stake. To me, what's at stake, though, is the future of innovation in many ways, depending on how the court writes the decision. And I also think, as a basic principle, an entrepreneur who creates a company relies on the law, relied on the statute, uh, a major court case from the Second Circuit, and built a business and invested in it, he should get some deference. Um, the Solicitor General of the United States, the, the Obama administration, took a position against the entrepreneur. Wow. And they started out saying the first thing they said was a surprise, which was, we think that to rule for the broadcasters, which you think you should, you must reverse the effect of this second circuit decision called the mm -hmm. Cablevision case, which said a cable company could do a lot of what Aereo was doing. But the second circuit is a big circuit. There was two district court decisions. There's three cases now saying what Aereo is doing is legal. And the statute itself, which is very clear, which they didn't even discuss, uh, because I think on the statute, according to the law, Aereo did nothing wrong. But it took the broadcast and said, you may be following the law and the statute and these court decisions, but you know what? We don't like what you're doing, and we're going to get, all get together and stop you all the way up to the Supreme Court. We're not a lobbying machine. We're not PR. And that's what's going on here. And, and the problem with that, I think, is that the, the broadcasters have gone from 100% market share when I was a kid, 1960s yep. year, three, maybe four if you count PBS, to now they're almost nothing. And yet they've asked the government every step of the way to protect them. They did it with the cable must carry their signal. Yeah. They have all these rules they follow. They have all these different things that they ask for, and they get it because they're the most effective lobbyists in Washington. <laughs> and now, you know... They're again asking the government to stop potential competition, which is too bad. So when do we get a decision from the Supreme Court? Well, the way it works is the Supreme Court uh, goes out for the summer, usually before July 4th, and they try to get rid of everything on their plate and then they, so they can take off a couple months and start the October term. Having said that, every justice is phenomenally hard work. They're literally dealing with thousands of cases they have to decide whether they'll hear, and then they actually hear about or a little more than 100 cases a year, and every one of those cases has 
uh, you know, a, de a decision. Nice Opinions yeah. often on both sides, sometimes concurring. I mean, it is nonstop work there, and it's difficult. It's very, they only get the toughest cases uh, or the cases they agree to hear. So we'll probably be there in the first week, last week of June, um, yeah, no, yeah, last week of June, June sometime, maybe it'll stretch over to July. Now with the Sony, but there's two other things that could happen besides a win and a loss or even a, um, is one, as it happened with the Sony Betamax case, where I go to the, we go to the court every day waiting for a decision. At the last day in early July, they said, we're putting this over and we're going to re-argue it no. next. So we went through the whole process again. Uh, the other thing they could do is there was an interesting discussion in the very beginning about why Aereo is not a cable system and why don't we just remand this to the the um, district court to resolve that question. Yeah. They could do something weird like that and just, which would surprise probably everyone, but maybe less so after this argument, and remand for things. So nothing's ever as clear as you want it. Okay. The Supreme Court increasingly is divided and they also try to go as narrow as possible. So. Well, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. You know, I have practiced law in over 20 years. I. I was shocked that I found myself the other day debating the uh, former Solicitor General of the United States, uh, both on PBS and on uh, Reuters. <laughs> That's but I'll awesome. say one thing, you know, I, I was on Fox, and at first I thanked them, because Fox is the litigant against us, in this case, one of the litigants. And they had me debate a lawyer, who I did, and the anchor said, uh, what do the, the viewers think? What do you think as a viewer? Who won this debate, Gary or the... Uh, with Ario or the the lawyer for the broadcasters, and she tweeted later on overwhelmingly, Ario won. Well, that's so, good. Well, that's that's good news. Um, I, that's what I would expect from you know, the would. social world for sure. What are you? Well, yeah, what are you predicting? My prediction, and I said it the other day on my show. So I I, I uh, I'm already on the record. I think Ario is going to win, and uh, I think that it's going to be a huge turning point for the broadcasters because, you know, they're going to have a significant loss dealt to them. And furthermore, I think this is going to be the best marketing campaign <laughs> Ariel could have ever dreamt. I mean, well, that's for you sure. could never get this kind of press but you know what? in the, any other way. The thing I keep wondering is, if can Ariel withstand all of these in, the costs of going to court and going back and back and back? Are well, they, they going to be so able far. to They've done it. They've gone through it now. It. I know, but they, there's a potential for going on and on. I, I think that if all they would have to do, honestly, is is throw out a Kickstarter campaign or something. I mean, if they run out of their funding sources, throw sure out a campaign. Are, there's and the, plenty of people waiting I mean, to give them money. People but. would just throw money at them. <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. So just so you know, Barry Diller is one of the major funders of Aereo. And I think uh, the Aereo president, and I believe maybe Mr. Diller himself, have made it clear that if they lose big in the Supreme Court, it's over. They go out of business. Yeah. Oh. Um, but other okay. scenarios, look, they're already starting in a lot of cities. They maxed out. They said at 10,000 subscribers in one of the cities. Um, they have a revenue flow already. They're definitely in startup mode still, but they have revenue. But yeah, it, these lawyers are using, and like a lot of lawyers in Washington are, you know, these are $400, $500 an hour lawyers. Yeah. yeah. These are not cheap they're people, expensive. and it's very expensive to get a case to the Supreme Court. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. We, we filed as the Consumer Electronics Association with the consumer groups. Who we and you know we had to argue about it, innovation and about being an entrepreneur and relying on the law and also just the law itself. It's pretty clear in our view that it's errors right now. Having said that, if you look at the media reports from the area argument, especially some of those that have you know they they've heard the broadcaster spin now. And Ario has one PR person, and you know I'll do an interview with you. So it's not you know they're a member of ours. Ario is a member of our association, but they're yeah. one of two thousand. I think they give us ninety five dollars a year to be a member. So we're out there because they are a startup, and we stand up for the small guy. They're disruptive. We stand up for them, and just the way we fight for Uber, the taxi service, yeah. it's important to us that we are out there fighting for innovators like. Uber and Tesla and the Dish Hopper, if you remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're out there for the disruptors because the disruptors are, would always move us forward and there's always some big industry on the other side trying to just squash them with the yeah. full force of government behind yeah. them. Yeah. 
Well, well, we are glad you guys are there looking out for everybody. Indeed. And uh, you guys, uh, viewers, can uh, see more about innovation and where the world stands at the moment from Gary's book. That's right. Gary, where can <laughs> they get your book? Ninja oh, Innovation. You can get it anywhere online. Anywhere Ninja, online. Ninja Star. Innovation. Yes. Go get Ninja it. Ninja Innovation. <laughs> it's That's a right. great book. Thank you, Gary, so much for taking the time to explain well, all of that and give us a, an overview. I love pushing the book, but you know, if you want to do something about this and stay involved, it's innovation movement is yes. what we have. It's, it, we're out there fighting. Anyone who wants to sign up for the innovation movement is free. You get a weekly email, and it tells you how to contact your congressman on issues affecting innovation. Yeah, do that. I get yes. mine every week. Me too. comes in my email. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you both. It's great seeing you, and I look forward to the opening of your new digs. <laughs> thanks, Gary. <laughs> thanks, Gary. Thanks for the time, and we'll talk to you later. You guys, thanks for watching, and thumbs up on YouTube for Gary Shapiro. Two if you got him. All right, see <laughs> you guys. Bye. Bye.